Ghost by Jason Reynolds, a first chapter Friday read aloud with The Word Nerd. Today as you listen, watch for the story quote that will appear on screen. Write it down word by word and then follow the instructions given to you by your teacher. Hi, my name is Amanda Ziba. Welcome to my channel, Learning with the Word Nerd, another First Chapter Friday video. Today I'm going to be reading you the first chapter of the book Ghost by Jason Reynolds. And before I do that, I just want to quick tell you, uh, Jason isn't going to be here for an interview today, but I did get the chance to meet him a few years ago when he visited um, some local schools in our local library. And he is like one of the nicest humans I've ever met. Just so generous and he gives so freely of his wisdom and passion uh, to the educational and writing community. So um, not likely that he'll ever see this, but Jason, thank you so much for all that you do. Um, like I said, I'm gonna be reading the first chapter of Ghost, but if you're a teacher and you're watching this, um, another one of Jason's books that I love is called For Everyone, um, and it's actually uh, one long poem in book form, and I read this on the first day of class to my students uh, every semester. So if you're looking for a pep talk or some inspiration or motivation, um, you should check out this book as well. I will make sure to put it in uh, the description. So, um, Ghost. Running. That's all Ghost, real name Castle Cranshaw, has ever known. But never for a track team. Nope, his game has always been ball. But when Ghost impulsively challenges an elite sprinter to a race and wins, the Olympic medalist track coach sees he has something. Crazy natural talent. Thing is, Ghost has something else. A lot of anger and a pass that he tries to outrun. Can Ghost harness his raw talent for speed and meld with the team, or will his past finally catch up with him? Ghost is the first book in Jason Reynolds' explosive track series about a fast but fiery group of kids who have a shot at the Junior Olympics, but they have a lot to prove first, to one another and to themselves. Chapter 1, World Records Check this out. This dude named Andrew Dahl holds the world record for blowing up the most balloons, with his nose. Yeah, that's true. Not sure how he found out that was some kind of special talent, and I can't even imagine how much snot be in those balloons, but hey, it's a thing, and Andrew's the best at it. There's also this lady named Charlotte Lee who holds the record for owning the most rubber ducks. No lie. Here's what's weird about that. Why would you even want one rubber duck, let alone 5,631? I mean, come on. And me, well, I probably hold the world record for knowing about the most world records. That, and eating the most sunflower seeds. Let me guess. Sunflower seeds. Mr. Charles practically shouts from behind the counter of what he calls his country store, even though we live in a city. Mr. Charles, who by the way looks just like James Brown, if James Brown were white, has been ringing me up for sunflower seeds five days a week for about, let me think, since the fourth grade, which is when Ma took the hospital job, so for about three years now. He's also hard of hearing, which when my mom used to say this, I always thought she was saying harder hearing, which made no sense at all to me. I don't know why she didn't just say almost deaf. Maybe because hard of hearing is more like hospital talk, which was probably rubbing off on her. But yeah, Mr. Charles can barely hear a thing, which is why he's always yelling at everybody and everybody's always yelling at him. His store is a straight-up scream fest, not to mention the extra sound effects from the loud TV he keeps from behind the counter. Cowboy movies on repeat. Mr. Charles is also the guy who gave me this book, Guinness Book of World's Records, which is where I found out about Andrew Dahl and Charlotte Lee. He tells me I can set a record one day, a real record, be one of the world's greatest somethings. Maybe. But I know one thing. Mr. Charles has to hold the record for saying, let me guess, sunflower seeds, because he says that every single time I come in, which means I probably also already hold the record for responding loudly the exact same way. Let me guess, one dollar. That's my comeback. Said it a gazillion times. Then I slap a buck in the palm of his wrinkly hand and he puts the bag of seeds in mine. After that, I continue on my slow motion journey, pausing again only when I get to the bus stop. But this bus stop ain't just any bus stop. It's the one that's directly across the street from the gym. I just sit there with the other people waiting for the bus, except I'm never actually waiting for it. The bus gets you home fast, and I don't want that. I just go there to look at the people working out. 
See, the gym across the street has this big window, like the whole wall is a window, and they have all those machines that make you feel like walking up steps, and so everybody just be facing the bus stop, looking all crazy like they're about to pass out. And trust me, there ain't nothing funnier than that. So I check out that for a little while, like it's some kind of movie, the About to Pass Out show, starring stair stepper person 1 through 10. I know this all probably sounds kind of weird, maybe even creepy, but it's something to do when you're bored. Best part about sitting there is tearing into my sunflower seeds like they're theater popcorn. About the sunflower seeds. I used to just put a whole bunch of them in my mouth at the same time, suck all the salt off, and then spit them out machine gun style. I could have probably set a world record on that too, but now I've matured. Now I take my time, moving them around, positioning them for the perfect bite to pop open the shell, then carefully separating the seed from it with my tongue. Then, and this is the hard part, keeping the little seeds safe in the space between my teeth and tongue, and spit the shells out. And finally, after all that, I chew the seed up. I'm like a master at it, even though honestly sunflower seeds don't taste like nothing. I'm not even sure they're really worth all the hassle, but... I like the process anyway. My dad used to eat sunflower seeds too. That's where I get it from. But he used to chew the whole thing up, the shells, the seeds, everything, just devour them like some kind of beast. When I was really young, he used to ask him if a sunflower was gonna grow inside of him since he ate the seeds so much. He was always watching some kind of game like football or basketball and he'd turn to me for just a second, just long enough not to miss a play and say, sunflowers are all up in me, kid. Then he'd shake up the seeds in his palm like dice before throwing another bunch into his grill to chomp down on. But let me tell you, my dad was lying. Wasn't no sunflower seeds growing in him. Couldn't have been. I don't know a whole lot about sunflowers, but I know they're pretty and girls like them. And I know the word sunflower is made up of two words. And that main ant got two words in him. Or anything that any girl would like because girls don't like men who try to shoot them and their son. And that's the kind of man he was. It was three years ago when my dad lost it, when the liquor made him meaner than he'd ever been. Every other night, he would become a different person, like he'd morphed into someone crazy. But this one night, my mother decided to finally fight back. This one night, everything went worse. I had my head sandwiched between the mattress and my pillow, something I got used to doing whenever they were going at it, when my mom crashed into my bedroom. We gotta go, she said, yanking the covers off my bed. And when I didn't move fast enough, she yelled, come on. The next thing I knew, she was dragging me down the hallway, my feet tripping over themselves, and that's when I looked back and I saw him, my dad, staggering from the bedroom, his lips bloody, a pistol in his hands. Don't make me do this, Terry, he angry begged, but me and my mom kept rolling. The sound of the gun cocking, the sound of the door unlocking. As soon as she swung the door open, my dad fired a shot. He was shooting at us, my dad. My dad was actually shooting at us, his wife and his boy. I didn't look to see what he hit, mainly because I was scared it was going to be me or Ma. The sound was big and sharp enough to make me feel like my brain was going to pop in my head, enough to make my heart hiccup. But the craziest thing was I felt like the shot, the loudest sound I ever heard, made my legs move even faster. I don't know if that's possible, but that's definitely what it seems like. My mom and I kept running down the staircase into the street, breaking into the darkness with death chasing behind us. We ran and ran until finally we came upon Mr. Charles' store, which luckily for us stays open 24-7. Mr. Charles took one look back at me and my mom out of breath, crying barefoot in our pajamas, and he hid us in the storage room while he called the cops. We stayed there all night. I haven't seen my dad since. Ma said the cops... Ma said the cops said that when they got to the house, he was sitting outside on the steps, shirtless, with the pistol beside him, guzzling beer and eating sunflower seeds, waiting. Like he wanted to get caught. Like it was no big deal. They gave him ten years in prison, and to be honest, I don't know if I'm happy about that or not. Sometimes I wish he would have gotten forever in jail. Other times I wish he was home on the couch watching the game, shaking seeds in his hand. Either way, one thing is for sure, that was the night I learned how to run. So when I was done sitting at the bus stop in front of the gym and came across all those kids on the track at the park practicing, I had to see what was going on because running ain't nothing I ever had to practice. It's just something I knew how to do. You want to see what happens to ghosts 
and his friends on the track team pick up your copy of Ghost, uh, either at your school library or your local indie bookstore, um, or if you can't find it there in the link in the description box. I hope you love this book and all of Jason's books as much as I do. Happy reading! To continue reading Ghosts by Jason Reynolds, head to your school library, local library, favorite bookstore, or click the link in the description box. Then make sure you check out the rest of the First Chapter Friday playlist. I have tons of great middle grade and YA stories waiting for you, one for each week of the year. This week's mystery quote says, you can't run away from who you are, but what you can do is run towards who you want to be. Please like this video and subscribe so you can stay connected for more great First Chapter Friday videos and other videos you can use in your classroom. Happy reading!